Good morning, and happy Easter to you, or as I like to call it, happy resurrection morning. Uh, it's uh, good to, to be able to stand and proclaim the blessed gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's what a blessing and what a privilege it is to be able to stand and, and preach uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I think about Easter, uh, there what a difference that uh, the first resurrection uh, Sunday makes, and and I begin to think about that. You know, the greatest day in history was that day that Jesus Christ came forth out of that tomb. And uh, that was really the first Easter. You know, we come to church because uh, on Sunday because it's the day of the resurrection. And ever since Jesus stepped out of that tomb and defeated death and hell in the grave, Christians, we've worshipped on Sunday, the first day of the week. You know, as I begin to think about that, I begin to think about that resurrected life of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got some scriptures that I'd like to share with you this morning and just uh, four or five points we'd like to uh, uh, just take uh, with the liberty of Christ and preach on for just a few minutes. Matthew chapter number 28, begin reading there in verse number one. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Can I just say this morning, uh, that stone was not rolled away so Christ could get out. That stone was rolled away so that you and I could get in. His uh, countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Let us move over just a little bit uh, here in the New Testament over to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Share a few passages of scripture with you here. Uh, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In this life only we have hope. In Christ we were of all men most miserable. <laughs> I begin to think about the resurrected life. Uh, what a difference and what a change it made in, in those ladies and those disciples' lives when they went to that tomb and they found that tomb empty on that resurrection morning. I, I began to think about the difference that uh, that Christ makes in us uh, when we are uh, when we are truly born again, when we are His. You know, I began to think, are we living a resurrected life? I believe there's some things that's going to take place in our lives, friends, if we're truly living a resurrected life in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what does Easter mean to you this morning? For so many, it has to do with a rabbit. For so many others, it has to do with colored eggs or uh, or uh, Easter baskets or putting on fine clothes or dressing up and looking real pretty and, and, and coming to the house of God. Can I say, friend, Easter means a lot more than that, especially if you are a child of God, especially if you are living a resurrected life. Can I tell you, if you are living a resurrected life in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be living a new life. You say, preacher, what do you mean? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Can I tell you, friend, if we're living the resurrected life in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a new beginning. We have a fresh start. Thank God, friends, that our sins are not held against us today that we place our faith in 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, when he gives us a life with meaning. You say, preacher, what do you mean? As I look around us today, there's many today that has no hope. There's many today that seems to be searching. The other night I received a text on the phone. And uh, it was about 9.30 at night. And, and I opened up that text. And, and there was a picture. There was a picture of three crosses there on the front porch of the church. Lighted crosses. And underneath it they had written, there is hope at the foot of the cross. I'm so glad, thank God, friend. When we, when we are living a resurrected life, we're living a life with meaning. We're living a life with hope, friend. We're, we're living a life that's worth living. For so many today, friends, they're looking for something. They're looking for some hope. They're looking for some peace. They're looking for some comfort. But, friend, you can't find it if you stay in your old life. I begin to think about Jesus there. As those ladies came and, they, uh, they, and his disciples there to that empty tomb, the Bible says that the angel told them, said, fear not. Can I tell you today, friend, if you're living a resurrected life, friend, fear not. Though the world may shake, though the, it may quake, we're living, we're living with a blessed hope. We live, friend, because he lives this morning. I'm so glad, thank God, as Paul wrote over our first Corinthians, he said, if, uh, if Christ be not risen, then our faith is in vain. Can't can I tell you this morning, we serve a risen Savior. I'm so glad, thank God, that I can stand before you and say, hey, he makes a difference in your life. Friend, he'll give you a new set of standards to live by. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, he says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Can I tell you something, friend? Where we're living a resurrected life, it'll not be a popular life. This old world does not. They look at us like we're odd. Can I tell you something? We, the people of God, are to be a superior people. Friend, it's not a popular way. Being a child of God and living that dedicated, holy, resurrected life. Can, can I tell you something this morning? It's not the easy way. People are on the easy way. The easy way out. Friend, can I tell you, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, He never promised us that we'd have a rose garden. He never promised us that there would be any, not be any bumps and not be any, uh, any uh, holes along the way and along that journey. But He did promise us if we'll hold to Him, if we'll cling to Him, if we'll look to Him with eyes of faith and a heart of love, that He would guide us and He would lead us. Friend, it's not the easy way. But I, can I tell you something right now this morning? It's the right way and it's the only way. Friend, it's the holy way. Friend, if you want to live a resurrected life, friend, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to live according to what God says here. He says there in Isaiah, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts then your thoughts. Friend, can I tell you something right now? Living a resurrected life for the Lord Jesus Christ is the right way. It's the best way. Friend, get in that holy way and stay in that holy way. Friend, I begin to think about just a little bit more. What would, what Jesus does when we're truly when we're truly living for him. Friend, he'll give you a new set of goals. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Over in the 6th chapter of Matthew, verse number 20 and verse number 21, he says, Says, but lay not, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust corrupt, and where thieves do not break in through steel, nor steal. For where the treasure is, there will your heart be also. Friend, can I tell you something right now? When we're living that resurrected life, we're going to be living for Jesus instead of self. I'm telling you today, friends. Thank God, He makes a difference. <coughs> he He makes a difference in your life. And no longer will you be chasing after the things of this old world, friend. No longer will you be looking for pleasures in this old world. Friend, I'm telling you, we'll be living for him instead of for ourselves. You know, the greatest love that we have is one for another. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Friend, we need to focus on the positive. If there's ever been a day, friends, that we, the people of God, need to be focusing on the positive. We look around us and we want to talk about what's so bad. Friend, we want to. We want to get down and we want to get out. Can I tell you something, Christian? 
We're going to get out of here one day, but we're going to fly out of here. And while we're here in this old journey and here in this old walk, we need to be positive knowing, hey, we're living a resurrected life. <coughs> Can I tell you this morning? We need to be a positive people, friend. We need to be a people who encourages this world around us today. There's many that's lost and undone. Don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They do not know the risen Savior. Friend, let me tell you, you and I as Christians, we need to put a smile on our face. We need to put a, a, a step, a high step in our step, friend. We need to square our shoulders and lean back. And say, I'm living for Jesus. My Savior is a risen Savior. And because He lives, I live. Friend, we need to be a reaching the lost. The Bible told, says there in the book of Matthew, over in the 28th chapter, we was reading there a while ago. And uh, Jesus, in Jesus uh, the, the, the angel told them there, said, uh, down there in verse number uh, 6, He said, he, uh, he is not here, for He is risen. And He said, Come. See the place where the Lord lay? Now listen, here we go. You and I, what do we do after Easter, friend? We need to go home and sit down and feed our faces full. What we're to do, friend, is uh, is we're to go home and we're to be telling the people about a risen Savior, about this man named Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, he told us, he said this to him. He said, go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Friend, we need to be a rich and a lost. What a time of uh, what a time of year for, for God's people, those people who are living a resurrected life, to be rich and the lost and be preaching the gospel. Friend, we need to be fulfilling that great commission. You know, we're, uh, <coughs> it seems, folks, that we, we get content with where we're at. But can I tell you, it's our job as God's people to be reaching those lost, be reaching that one that's standing nearest to hell, telling them about a risen Savior, telling them about a man who can give you a new life, about a man who can, who can give you a new way to live, about a man who will change the way that you look at everything. Friend, he'll give us a new freedom. I'm so glad, thank God, the Bible says over in number 6, 22 and 23, said, but now, and Romans 6, 22 and 23, but now being made free from sin and become service to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm telling you this morning, thank God he'll give you a freedom. He'll give you a freedom from that sin, from that bondage of sin that you've been caught up in uh, uh, all of your life. Friend, I'm telling you, he can deliver you from that. Thank God he said he'll take those sins, cast them as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more. I'm so glad that he does not hold my sins against me. Friend, the day that he died on the cross, Shed that precious blood, my friend. He 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 covered my sins. My sins. He he died for my sins. He died for your sins. Friend, he gives us. Uh, he makes us free to live abundantly. You know, I, I think about that. He's promised that he'll provide our every need. And I, just as I said last week, he's provided in the past. He's provided it now, and he'll provide in the future. Friend, I'm so glad, thank God, that I can live abundantly in the Lord Jesus Christ. I can have abundant joy, my friend. I can have abundant peace. I can have a fellowship and uh, with him. You know, and he gives us free, and he helps us. He gives us freedom to live a joy, to live a life of joy and happiness. I'm so glad today when there's so many sad faces, friend, so many, uh, so much uh, pain and so much sorrow that you and I, as a child of God, we can live with joy. We can live with happiness. You say, preacher, uh, sometimes it gets hard. Yes, it does get hard. The friend is comforting and knowing, hey, look. Our Savior, our Savior went to an old rugged cross, friend, laid down his life. Then uh, uh, Willard was placed in a borrowed tomb, friend, but on the third day, he stepped out of that tomb. And because he lives, you and I can live. Friend, what a joy knowing, hey, regardless whether I live, whether I die, I can be happy and I can have joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm so glad this morning, friend, that uh, for the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, he's not dead. He is alive and alive forevermore. I ask you, what does the resurrection of Jesus mean to you this morning? 
Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, as your risen Savior? Friend, are you living a resurrected life? You know, I want to encourage you uh, uh, on this uh, Resurrection Sunday, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what an Easter, what a day, friend, to, to, to know that you can be placed in, in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I ask you this morning, are you living a resurrected life? Are you living a life knowing that everything's going to be okay? Friend, are you living a life sharing the gospel with those that, who are lost and undone? I want to encourage you today. Let's celebrate Easter for what it really is. And what it really is is that we serve a risen Savior. He lives, he lives. And because he lives, we live. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we humbly call upon thy holy name today, God, we come thanking you for your great love, your mercy, your long-suffering, Father. God, we come thanking you, Lord, for your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. But Father, we know that you love so much that you gave Jesus to a lost and dying world. And God, we know that uh, Jesus loved so much that he willingly gave his life. But Father, we know that he willingly lay it down, but he also took it up. And Father, we come this morning thanking you, Father, for Resurrection Sunday. God, we just ask right now, Lord, that you help us, Father. Go with us, guide, lead, and direct us in everything that we might do on this Easter Sunday. Father, may it be done for thy honor and for thy glory. Most of all, Father, we pray for that one this morning that's lost and undone, doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Father, we pray that you might reprick that heart. God, help them see the need of a, of a Savior, a Savior that's, uh, that's only the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, help us to be what you would have us to be. Help us to do what you would have us to do. God, strengthen us, encourage us, Father, and Lord, let us uh, go throughout this day letting people know that we serve a risen Savior. Amen and amen.